Hi, today I am with Liz Nathali. She is the beautiful champion and advocate aunt for Abigail Moore Idan, and we have seen her picture. We did a special called Hope for Israel, probably about eight days into this war in this horrific situation. And not very often do we get to say, praise God, Baruch Hashem, look at this miracle. But today we do. Abigail has been returned and she is with family. She is safe. Liz, thank you for coming today and just sharing. I know that the relief you must feel is, is just indescribable. Yes, it, it's a huge relief. I mean, I think about 50 days and I wear this because today is the 52nd day that over 240 innocent civilians were kidnapped and taken as hostage to Gaza. And Abigail had her fourth birthday on Friday. She was released on Sunday and it is a huge relief. But what it is, is like you said, it's a miracle that she survived and the massacre on the 7th of October and that she is home with her brother and sister, her aunts, her uncles, her cousins. And, you know, we are very thankful and we still continue the work because there are still many innocent civilians who are kept as hostages in Gaza. There is a 10 month old baby. There are little kids, there are mothers, grandmothers, sons, grandfathers, and they could all be our family. They are all our family, but they could be our family. I never imagined this could even be something in my personal family, but what it's made me realize is that we're all a family. And there's been incredible outpouring of love, support, prayer um, from people from all different religions. And, and if I could find any silver lining is to understand that people, when this kind of a thing happens, this tragedy, that people really do care and they show love and support. Well, I it isn't it it's sad that it sometimes takes situations that are crisis oriented to bring people together, but I know you've seen so many people unite, put down their political parties, put down their faith, uh or their religion and and just come together for this cause of seeing the the hostages come home. Yeah. Listen, it's about humanity. At the end of the day, it's about heart and humanity and what I believe is that there is much more that unites us and that brings us together than what should separate us. And these are those moments where there we can see darkness in our world, but that is a bright light. Abigail coming home is a brilliant light. And Abigail is a symbol. Abigail is a symbol of this hostage taking nobody, no child at three years old should be a hostage. Nobody should be a hostage at all, but no child should be a hostage for one second. And I look at it like, I also believe Abigail is like a beacon of hope for our future, that we come together and that we understand that, that we need to show love and that should be our guiding principle. And that I hope, I hope that all these hostages are home really soon. And I will continue doing everything I can. And I know so many other people are, and I know that our US government is, and I believe to be thankful to our president, to the Qataris, to the Egyptians, to everyone who has made this day possible for Abigail to come home and so many hostages who have, and the ones that are still gonna keep working for those who are yet to come home. But I really think that Abigail is a symbol of what we can hope for our future. We wanna make this world a better place for our children. And that's what we are going to continue to do. Well, Liz, thank you for this new mission and this movement that you're leading. It, you, you didn't choose it, but God chose you to do it. And I know that you are rejoicing about Abigail, but that you know your work's not over. And we commit to continue praying for you. And we will not stop praying until we see all of the hostages come home. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing the story. And thank you for being one of the first people that reached out to say, we are here to help get Abigail and these hostages home. And that is something I will always hold very close to me and in my heart, because I know that you were there from the start. And thank you so much. It means the world.
Thank you, Liz. I can't wait to meet you in person and, and hug Abigail. And I know there's many miracles that God still has in store um, for that he will unfold in, in, in this tragic time that beauty will come from these ashes. Thank you for, for talking to us today. Thank you. Well, it is a joy and honor today to have Jordan Sekolo with us. Uh, he and his family are a household name in the conservative community and the Christian community, and they have dedicated their lives to fervently fighting for legal rights for Americans, for Christians, for conservatives. And uh, Jordan, thank you so much for being with us today and all that you are doing for the cause of Christ on the earth today. Uh, thanks for giving me time uh, to discuss it, Jen. Thank you. And for all you do at CTN. Well, thank you so much. Listen, let's just jump right in. We are in the middle of a very uh, turbulent time, mm -hmm. and uh, you guys are on the front lines. You are you are standing uh, with Israel. You are supporting hostages. You are providing legal services. You are letting us know our rights and what we can and can't do. And so do you mind just speaking to some things that are going on currently in our culture and, and what God is using you all to do to help? You know, what I think is, is most important, right, when it comes to our Christian culture in the United States, what we learned through this process, and it's been happening, we've been watching it over the last uh, decade or so, a lot of these new younger churches that have popped up, which, again, I don't think they're necessarily coming at it from a, 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 a dark perspective, but they are, uh, again, they're, they're kind of rethinking, should we always be supporting Israel? Are we really that connected to Israel? What about those Christian Palestinians that are in the West Bank? Uh, and 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 how should we, you know, how do we how do we figure this out? Should we be picking sides? So there's already been that issue, and I think you've seen that times a million on liberal college campuses, and we've seen these protests across the country. But I do want to make clear that those protests, while they look large and some very are around the world, when it comes down to it in the United States whether it's Republicans or Democrats, uh, the majority support the state of Israel. And they also support the state of Israel in this war against Hamas. Uh, they hate, everyone hates to see war. Everyone hates to see civilian casualties on both sides. But what Hamas did was so horrific. It, they, they call it Hamas ISIS now, backed by Iran, uh, that, that, that we, we're actually working together on a group of 100 former world leaders uh, who are going to basically sign on to a letter that said, if this happened to our country, uh, we would respond like this or even more aggressively uh, than, than Israel did we, because we're not surrounded by necessarily three or four enemies. So, uh, of course, we're prepared for two things, uh, uh, Jen. One, at the ACLJ, we represent 40 hostage families. We brought three of those families to the U.S. House of Representatives and to Congress. They met with um, because of unique relationships we have, they met with the entire uh, House leadership, including the new Speaker Johnson, uh, Elise Stefanik, uh, and uh, uh, Steve Scalise. They also uh, then after, and they did this big press conference for them, let them tell their stories. That kind of got this momentum building. Then one of my buddies, he was in my fraternity at GW, is a Democratic congressman. He's very moderate, pro-Israel from Florida, uh, who used to actually, he worked in the DeSantis administration for emergency management, um, is named Jared Moskowitz. And I was talking to him and I said, can we gather a meeting of, of uh, Democrats to hear from these families? And it was predominantly Jewish Democrats who came in. And, you know, we were the Trump lawyers and, and those Democrats knew that. And they came and, and, we were hugging by the end of it, and it, it just showed this is one of those issues. Yes, there is the squad on Capitol Hill, but I was told I won't name that Democrat. And he said the problem is, is not that the everyone in the Democrat Party believes in what the squad does and is that radical. The problem is there are only about 20 Democrats willing to go. They might take the right votes, but willing to go speak out on Israel's behalf because they're afraid of getting booed by the grassroots and challenged by a more liberal uh, candidate. So that's what the Democrat Party is dealing with right now is almost this uh, slow takeover and push out of, of the Democrats who we would uh, disagree with on a lot of issues. But when it comes to Israel, there was really uh, no, no difference. Uh, we always uh, supported Israel. Uh, some of us had differences on how to deal with Iran. But there was no question. And now there is. And uh, and those Democrats are starting to kind of rethink um, um, how to move forward. And I think 
what is very important now as these hostages continue uh, to be released. And that is so important to Israelis and, and Israel's a sovereign country. Uh, they get to make these decisions. Uh, we've seen 51 uh, so far uh, Israeli women and children uh, released, including one Israeli, Israeli American. Uh, there's been 18 additional that have been released that are that are non-Israeli that were working in Israel um, and usually in the uh, kibbutzes they're working on the farms. Those yeah. have been released. What we haven't seen yet is uh, the family members we brought to Washington D.C. who met with, by the way, not just. Speaker Johnson, but uh, Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries as well uh, from the Democratic Party is uh, Israeli uh, males. Uh, and we represent um, those are the first groups we represented was a, a mother whose son is you know about 28 years old. Uh, he was shot in the arm. We know that. So so she just wants to know, did he survive that shooting? And is he still alive? Uh, uh, another one we represent is uh, twin brothers. Uh, and we represent their older brother that they, they were taken and and another uh, brother uh, uh, at the same kibbutz who was taken uh, during uh, this massive onslaught. You have to realize when, when Hamas came into these small kibbutzes, um, small villages, really, it took 24 to 36 hours to clear them out. Yeah. I mean, this wasn't like a, 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 a 30 minute attack. Uh, they were there for a long period of time because a lot of these kibbutzes are located in rural parts of Israel. And I think Israel will have to rethink whether or not uh, it's safe enough to have these kibbutzes and these, these individuals uh, live anywhere close uh, to a, a terror state uh, so long as Hamas is in control. Well, I know with your help and other organizations like yours, we are praying that Israel, along with her allies, will be able to rid Israel of, you know, this terrorist organization. And, you know, you brought up some great points, Jordan. I think that in the midst of all of this, you know, we know the word and it says that he, that God takes everything that the enemy is meant for bad and he turns it to good. And so we are seeing, like you just mentioned, unity in the party, uh, alliances, people coming together, figuring out what they can agree on instead of what we disagree on. And I know that you um, have been, and, and, you know, the, the ACLJ have been a huge part in mediating that and bringing people to the table. And that's encouraging because, you know, this is a Christian station. And so, you know, of people viewing right now, you've got Republicans and Democrats. You know, I think that we've got to take the side of humanity, uh, right. just common sense, morality. And what does the word of God say concerning Israel? And I know you guys really advocate that and do a tremendous job. Yeah. You know, we have an office uh, in Jerusalem that we've had for over a decade. It's called, and we, it's, it's interesting, Jim, because in most of our international offices, for our European office, for instance, it's not ACLJ France. It's uh, the, the English translation is the European Center for Law and Justice, but it's a French run and European run office out of Strasbourg, France, where the Council of Europe and International Court of Human Rights is. But in Israel, it's ACLJ Jerusalem to show that strong bond yeah. between uh, Americans and Israelis. And it's not that we want to interfere with Israeli politics. They have their own political system and Israelis get to choose who leads their countries. But we always want to make clear, regardless of who's leading their country, that Americans have their back, even sometimes when it, it might not sound like the administration does. I will say the words coming out of President Biden have been very good. The words out of some of his underlings have not been. And that's when you get concerned about who's really running uh, the White House, especially while our U.S. troops are also under fire in yeah. this region of the world. We've had to shoot down two uh, 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 Houthi rebel uh, uh, missiles that were fired at uh, U.S. Uh, uh, US uh, 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 boats uh, and air aircraft carriers and, and cutters that were in uh, uh, the uh, Mediterranean right now. And, you know, the Trump administration kept the Houthi rebels on the terror terror list, the Biden administration removed them and they continue to fire upon Americans. So we all know who's really behind this. It's Iran. Hamas could not have done this without Iran. Uh, and what we are still concerned about is um, Hezbollah trying to kind of catch Israel off guard while this hostage release is ongoing. And of course, um, uh, the proxies that that Iran has in Syria as well. So this is far from over, but I think that every day that goes by, if Hamas today 
uh, releases those 10 more hostages they said they will do. And then they do it again tomorrow. I think we could see seven or eight more days like this. I'm not sure it can go much longer because Israelis are worried that if it goes much longer, they've lost all the military advantage they've had to eliminate Hamas. Uh, for instance, they learned that uh, while most of the Hamas political leaders fled fled the Gaza Strip and actually live in Qatar under surveillance, uh, that uh, they no longer have a lot of power. And, and some of the militant leaders that we actually – uh, Intel believed from the U.S. and Israel were dead, uh, were living underground and were masterminding this attack for a couple of years. So uh, there's still a lot more hostages that need to be released. But the good sign is it's almost hard to believe that in any are. I know. You know. When this first happened, I thought all those hostages would be dead. Yeah. I mean, that's just the, the bottom line truth. When you saw the savagery and yeah. how they were taken, ripping kids away, uh, pregnant women, the burning of people, just the, yeah, I don't want to go through the parade of horribles. Everybody's heard it. But when you see that, you know, ISIS never released, didn't go through hostage releases. So there is something unique here because there's part of the Arab world, which is far from perfect, but doesn't want them, doesn't want the entire Arab world to be uh, identified as we're, we're, we're just like Hamas yeah. uh, or one day we'll become just like Hamas. And so We've got to, and what we're doing at the ACLJ, and it's changing day by day as we represent these clients, is do whatever we can strategically possible uh, to get as many of these hostages home, uh, working with Israel, working with the United States, working with uh, Qatar as necessary, and other uh, current and former world leaders. You know, we have Mike Pompeo on our staff at the ACLJ. We have Rick Rennell on our staff. We have Tulsi Gabbard on our staff at the ACLJ who are all providing uh, more than just commentary on our broadcast, but insight into us. And uh, and I've done negotiations in Qatar uh, with their foreign minister on behalf of Christians that were being held in Iran. And ultimately, about six months after that meeting, uh, uh, that uh, well, right away, that Christian uh, prisoner was put into a very good hospital and, and gotten back to health and was released about five months later. So, you know, they, they do play an important role. And so I'm careful about criticizing Qatar uh, too much in this situation. Uh, but uh, I think long term, we do have to rethink uh, this region. And I think Israel has a lot of work to do on rethinking uh, the enemies that they surround that they're surrounded by and the level of lethality yeah. that these enemies once had. You know, I was there during Operation Cast Lead. That was 2008, 2009. I landed. It was because we were helping a Palestinian Christian family get out of Gaza because uh, their their father was the head the, uh, and husband was the head of the Palestinian Bible Society in Gaza, the Christian group there. And he was murdered by Hamas in the streets. And uh, the children, even though they had a mother, uh, the, uh, the imams were trying to take the children away to raise them uh, Muslim. And she had family in the West Bank, which is a little bit more is a lot more friendly to Christians, not friendly to Israelis. And so they weren't asking to move to Israel. They just needed to get out of Gaza and get to the West Bank. And even during that war, uh, which we did not know was going to start the moment we landed, uh, the Israelis made good on their promise, told them to show up at that crossing. Hamas would open up the gate, probably tell them no one's going to let you in on the other side, but we'll let you go. And on the other side, the gate opened. Israelis put them in a car and took and reunited them with their family. So we do know that with hard work, uh, there can be good outcomes. Are all of them going to be good outcomes? Absolutely not. This is war. Uh, this is Hamas we're dealing with. A Hamas that we had not even seen this brutality before. But uh, Christians in America play a very important role here uh, because, uh, as you'll hear from Israelis oftentimes, um, we're some of the strongest supporters of Israel in the world. Uh, there, are, there are, of course, plenty of Jews in America who support Israel, but we're a larger demographic group in America. So we are really the driving force to make sure that our government is pro-Israel. Yeah, well, and that is a great way for us kind of wrap this up. I know you've got another interview, but I, I think that's so important Jordan, because we really do want to position, I, I of course, I think the power of prayer um, allows you to do what you do, the support of the Christian community, uh, to support your organization so that you can advocate in these near impossible situations. Mm -hmm. um, but how can, um, Jordan, just in closing, how can 
just just the average person watching this show that says, what can I do? You know, what what can I do in my limited income with my limited resources? What what can I do uh, to support the hostages? What can I do to help others? And how can I be more informed and prepared um, to support Israel in times like this? So we're actually launching today a short documentary. It's about 40 minutes that showed what we did with the hostages families that we brought to the United States, to Congress, to these meetings. So you'll see us as much as possible. Some of it we can't show, but they'll be and they'll see the meetings. And that is going to go up today at aclj.org slash bring them home. So I encourage people first check that out. And that that's pretty moving. And I think then you'll, you'll realize why uh, you should become an ACLJ donor. And what we have right now going on actually, Jen, is, is uh, two things. We have a faith and freedom drive uh, to the end of this month where if you make a $25 donation to the ACLJ, we have a group of our bigger donors that will match that. So it's like $50 for us. And we're also asking people to become ACLJ champions. ACLJ champions pick a number that they're comfortable with, uh, whether it's $25, $50 or $100 that will automatically donate to us each month. And of course, if they get into a tough month, they can go online and turn that off. That enables us to be ready to go in a situation. I was with two U.S. senators, Jen, outside of Washington, D.C., um, at a separate meeting, not about Israel, when this attack occurred. And we were able to mobilize our entire ACLJ team in Israel and the United States without thinking twice about how much it might cost. We didn't have to think about that because of our ACLJ donors and supporters. So support us at aclj.org. And we are updating people every day on what is going on in Israel. Yes. Well, Jordan, thank you. And I encourage all of our viewers to give, to go on the website, to support. I can vouch that I have um, seen my family as well as myself and my husband support this organization for decades. And they do what they say they're going to do. They have impeccable integrity. And we haven't even been able to address issues on college campuses, mm. You know, schisms and maybe Jordan, you can come back another time. Absolutely. Talk about that. But I pray that this campaign is successful. Thank you for doing this documentary, for producing it so quickly. And I know that it will help many people, especially those that just they really don't know what's going on because unfortunately our secular mainstream media is not covering it very uh well, neutrally and accurately. You know, Jen, send people should send this link out to there are young people who might be confused on this issue who are on those college campuses because uh, we also use a lot of the footage that Hamas shot itself. Yeah. And they're going to hear the stories from these families and they are tear jerking. And so uh, it's a great thing to share aclj.org slash bring them home. I think we can change a lot of minds that way. And it actually that documentary ends on a positive note because and I just uh, taped that ending yesterday because we have seen a full family reunification. Miracles can happen. We know we believe that as Christians, but we also know that God and Christ tells us to work hard uh, to, to, uh, to uh, see that justice is done. And that's what we are all doing, uh, both in prayer, in supporting the ACLJ, and of course, in doing these broadcasts like you do, Jen, on CTN. Yeah. Thank you, Jordan. I'm so grateful for you and uh, for all the work and the team and the staff there. And I look forward to us talking again. And uh, thank you for being part of the miracle because God always uses people. And so continue to do what you do and we'll be praying for you. And I encourage all the viewers to go on the website, send the link out and uh, support this organization. We need them on the front lines. My name is Jen Mallon and I encourage all of you, come home.